Hello everyone, Palitub here, and welcome back to the A through Z playthrough. Yes, this is a rare Heroes of the Storm video on the weekend. Um, ad revenue is really good in December. Thanks for watching. It goes away in about 30 days. Uh, today we're taking a look at Karazim, one of my all-time favorite characters in Heroes of the Storm. I very recently talked about the trip to Gamescom, the trip to Germany that Blizzard brought me out on to play Kel'Thuzad. Well, I had a lot of downtime on my hands. I would stream for six hours a day and just be in the convention center for the other six hours. And um, what happened was I would just play a lot of Heroes on the show floor. And what was great about that setup, it was it was all on a LAN connection. It was all local connection. We weren't connecting to the internet. We were just playing against the other computers across from you in the play area for heroes. Nothing felt better than playing Charism with zero latency. I felt like an absolute god. I'm pretty good at dodging stuff. I'm pretty good at landing divine palms, but nothing compares to zero input delay divine palms. I literally felt untouchable. There were games where I played against Chu8 and he was playing Kel'Thuzad, and I think Chu8 is a phenomenal player. I'm just gonna say that for the record, but I was dancing around him. Like there is no tomorrow. It was just so damn fun. And I, I wanted to at least bring up the LAN experience. If you guys were lucky enough to play Heroes on LAN, you know there's something really, really special about it. Karazim is sitting at a 50.94% win rate, a popularity of 9%. And part of that is always bans, but the ban rate for Karazim is just half a percentage. It is almost non-existent. If you want to play Karazim, you absolutely can. A lot of people play Karazim as a damage build, taking Iron Fists in the early game and then building into things like Way of 100 Fists. As you dive forward, you'll deal a lot of bonus damage to targets and then you can jump back out. I have always preferred the patented Pally Time Karazim build where you're just constantly focusing on cooldown reduction, punching stuff nonstop, and healing your allies as much as you can. And I, of course, talk about that in the video. There are some changes to Karazim I want to bring up. At the beginning of 2020, all of his level one traits got a nice little movement speed increase added to them so doesn't matter what you take at level one whenever you get that combo whenever you get that third hit you're going to get a small burst of movement speed allowing you to be much 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 more mobile in the middle of fights maneuver a little bit easier but also if you're chasing people down with wave of 100 fists it becomes much easier to stay in range of them Pretty cool change, uh, although there was an even better one, if you ask me, at the, what was it, July of this year, July 20th, 2021, we see a brand new talent being added to Karazim, the Fist of Legend. Hey, we don't have any artists left, but we need a new talent. What do we do? <laughs> But Fist of Legend gave 50% of the benefit from both your level one talents that were not chosen. Meaning even if you go for inside at level one, you could still get a damage bonus at level 20 and you could still get healing at level 20 as well, making you an even more unstoppable force. I actually didn't know about that addition and that was a very pleasant surprise when I picked up Karazim again. I've been rambling a little bit too long. Thank you guys so much for being here. Hope you enjoy today's episode. We'll be back again soon with a look at Leoric. And hey, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button on your way out, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves on the Tomb of the Spider Queen today. The friendly team Karazim, Mayev, the Butcher, Amethyst, and Azebo. The enemy team Kalthazad, White Mane, Samuro, Tracer, and Malthael. We're gonna go for insight at level one. Every third basic attack restores mana and grants a stack of insight. After we finish with a hundred punches that are empowered, so 300 punches, we then also get cooldown reduction and a nice movement speed increase in there as well. That's nice, that's a good addition. Uh, we are going to try to support our allies to the best of our ability today, but this is one of those matches that could definitely go either way. Both team has a lot 
of killing potential. I'm immediately going to veer off away from the main group and start working on my trait. This is very, very important. I cannot stress this enough. If they die, that's on them. That's not my fault. I'm over here doing what's best for the team in the long run. And the Butcher actually decided to rotate up and join us. Four members of the enemy team still located in the middle. Let's grab our butts. We might be able to rotate down relatively well. I would have charged that if I was him, actually. So if you've never seen Karazin before, our Q ability has two charges. This is a dash that allows us to jump to anything with the health bar. It can be friendly or enemy. I guess buildings don't count, so I guess not anything with the health bar. But it allows us to be super duper mobile. Uh, probably the most mobile healer in the game. I don't have a heal for him, unfortunately as he gets surrounded on all sides. Uh, one of the best ways to stack this shit up is to literally just go do mercenary camps. Unfortunately, there's not a ton on this map and our team's not doing a very good job of soaking. So um, I'm going to try to get the stacks where I can. Looks like Nazebo might be rotating up. No, just turning in right now with White Mane and Kel'Thuzad above him. Let's grab these bots. We can rotate up too. Uh, Kel'Thuzad on my far right side. Let's jump in on him. Even though we're a healer, we do pretty good damage. That Butcher's going to be able to get that meat in his belly in no time. Each punch does 72 damage, and um, we can increase our attack speed with Deadly Reach, which allows us to basically send out a flurry of blows within a short timer. This is one of the most important tools in our arsenal, especially early game for getting our stacks done. We are a third of the way there right now with a lot more to go, so it's really important that we stay on top of this. Always auto attacking whenever we can. Heal for Nazebo as he's running away. We just hit level four, which means we can pick an ally. I went for Green Man. Green Man provides healing to our team. And I'm gonna make sure they're standing in it. If they're not standing in it, I'm gonna say something. We're not just going to let this go idly unnoticed. Green Man is a very important part of our arsenal. Not only for its healing, but we can actually use it as a means for jumping to safety as well. If you're really into that play style, air ally is going to be a little bit better just because you have more charges and you could throw it down a little bit more often. But you could certainly do that with green man as well in a pinch. We are halfway done with our quest and I'm just going to keep punching. That's all there is to it. Like I said, we could go down here to this mercenary camp in the bottom lane and punch that. Giants are really, really good for finishing off this quest quickly. However, uh, those giants are on the other side of the map for me. I can't easily get there, so I'm doing the best with what I have. Danger Ping's going out. Let's assume she has some big spells at her disposal. Yes, she does, but hey, look at that. With the sippy cup and our green man, we're going to be just fine like nothing ever happened. The Butcher being chased out of that bottom area. Let's just make sure he's okay. Make sure we're dodging these Kel'Thuzad chains as well. I'm feeling one coming towards me soon. Well, maybe not actually. We're at 72 stacks. We are doing really, really well. If you can finish this before five minutes, you're on a good pace. I think my very best game, I did this at three minutes, but again, I had I just had free roam to go do whatever I want. No one was really bothering me. Lanes were being soaked. It was ideal conditions. It has been a long time since I've played Karazim. I, I did two warm-up matches coming into this one just to get a feel for the buttons again, but I didn't want this one to be super refined. I kind of wanted to see how much of the skill I retained, and I'm happy to report it was a decent amount if my last two games were any indication. We're going to put Green Man down for our friend here, trying to dodge the follow-up chain. Uh, stay in green zone. There you go, bud. Thank you. Here's him smile. <laughs> but you're looking for maybe an initiation onto that Kel'Thuzad, but he's not going to find it there. Uh, why do they have vision of you, Mayev? What's going on? Uh, Mouthy out for the enemy team rotating up top. That means the butcher's in grave danger. We're just going to ping a bunch of retreats there. We need one more stack and then we're done. So the reason we want to rush to get this done is because once our quest is completed, we can literally just stand still and trade with people. It's hilarious how much you can get away with because now every time you see that circle go away, it's giving us cooldown reduction for all of our basic abilities. This means if I'm able to go in and start punching, I can literally output more healing than just about anything alive. And if the butcher wants to go really far on kills like this, I can follow him up pretty safely 
in doing that. The enemy team still has the objective. Both teams sitting at level eight right now. Um, let's help Maya finish this off. I've always really, really loved this build because it allows you to be proactive on the map all the time. Even if you're super duper low on health, well, guess what? You're a healer. Your W ability will be there pretty soon. It'll heal yourself up really fast. Mana problems got you down? There's no mana problems here. What are you talking about? If you literally just keep punching, it returns all of your mana to you slowly but surely. Tracer moving in on our butcher. Now I'm the prime target, so let's make sure that we're getting back to safety. Green man for the butcher. I want him to stay in it. Is he going to stay in it? You know what? He did better than most do. He did better than most do. Jumping back to Maev to get to safety. Just going in for some few free hits there. Unfortunately, I seem to have baited the shit out of Maev, who unfortunately met an early demise, but I'm still in here. I'm still punching at least for the... Ooh! Next second. Butcher is able to get all of my spider butts. Those are still in play. Good job getting those. Let's turn them in soon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now level 10. This is where the fun really begins. Divine Palm. Protect an ally from death, causing them to be healed for a shit ton of healing instead of meeting an early demise. This means we can save the lives of our teammates in a lot of situations. Let's look at what the enemy team's going with for their talents. We do have Last Rites, which is not the execute that I was hoping for. Oh, really nice ult here from Armaya pulling in the enemy team's mouthy L. A shit ton of damage going down here. Let's make sure we drop Green Man for some extra healing as well. Maya's health got low, but not low enough to panic. We didn't need a palm for that. And we can try to heal her right back up if she would just get in range. But unfortunately, she stayed a little bit too far there. Abathur with the top hat is going to help subsidize our healing. Is that the right word? It felt like it. The enemy team Samro was going for this objective, but we are moving in and taking it over. Butcher with 46 spider butts is making me a little nervous over here. I'm just being honest about how I'm feeling. I'm sure he's doing great. He has 175 stacks. His damage is going to be coming online really soon. This Kalthazad's positioning really is making me wish that I went for seven-sided strike just to assassinate that guy over and over again. Uh, the real Samuro just dipped out of the top of the screen. This push is looking pretty good. Uh, we can turn in again after. Make sure that everyone has their eye on the prize there. Matthew rotating down. If he continued that rotation, he would have been dead instantly. Samuro, on the other hand, could probably get away with it. Samuro pulling the attention of the butcher away from the building we were going after. If we can rotate up top and help with this. We can easily turn in in 13 seconds. Let's just push this lane back. Make sure we're keeping the pressure on the enemy team's buildings as best as we can. Uh, I'm going to put Green Man in the bush just to scout it. And then everyone try to turn in. Good zombie wall. In fact, I had the least amount of butts almost. I had definitely on the lower side. Very insignificant. The friendly team was able to get those in. No problem. Keep the positivity flowing. Good job. Good job. Good job. Uh, does the enemy team have roots? Technically, yes. They also have stuns, but that's going to give me physical armor. I got to be honest, I'm a lot more afraid of the spell armor. So we're going to take the spell shield, or I'm a lot more afraid of the spell damage of the enemy team. So we're going to take the spell shield at 13 just to give us a little more defense. Uh, if we take damage from a spell, I believe this spikes or... Is it always 50? 50 seems really high. Yeah, every 30 seconds, we just get a 50 spell shield. That's pretty good. This could help with the Kel'Thuzad combo if it does come towards us, but um, so far we've done a pretty decent job of avoiding that. So with the second objective for our friendly team, we're pushing in on the tier one defenses of the bottom lane. It's getting taken down really, really fast. Uh, I could get cleanse to help out with the Kel'Thuzad combos, and I hope I don't regret not doing that, because... Um, I don't think I'm gonna. Samuro is pushing in behind me, but we are totally fine. Real Samuro is in this mess. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the green man, move in to help out the butcher. And again, all I'm trying to do is maintain my E being up at all times, me punching stuff at all times. That is the most important thing. So as my team's moving forward, yes, I wanna be in range to heal them, but more importantly, 
I want to be in range of this fucking building so I can keep pushing it. Uh, we, oh, excuse me. I looked at Mathiel's ultimate wrong. He did have the execute. The butcher decided to stay in there even after everything went to shit. I'm going to grab those spider butts and try to reposition. Jumping over to Maev now. I actually need to punch if I'm going to save anybody. Looks like I'm not going to save anybody. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Uh, we are able to get away from this no problem. We need to be careful about how we are leaving, however, because there was a lot over there. Yeah, literally, I looked at this and thought it was the AoE ultimate, so that's my bad. Yes. My bad. We actually picked the perfect ultimate for countering the Mouthiel, which feels really, really good. Uh, I'm going to turn in 17. Azebo turning in 25. We're already looking pretty good for the next objective, if it ever happens. Uh, the enemy team's white main is going to stop me in my tracks right there. We're really looking forward to level 16. We get a huge power spike at 16. It allows our heal to basically go off twice. And when you consider how much cooldown reduction we're also giving ourselves, we're going to be just literally overflowing with heals all of the time. The enemy team is getting another objective right now. This is a pretty close game so far. Uh, if we're not careful, middle could get pushed in really easy. This is the real Samro, so I'm going to sit there and do some damage to it before he decides to stealth away. I mean, white main probably has more healing output than a Karazim does until level 16, and then I actually would kind of argue I might be the winner there. Here's him, uh, excuse me, um, uh, Kelfzad is comboing me, but we literally didn't even take any spell damage because of our spell shield. Our Butcher looking a little low on health. Let's just put the green thing down and hope that he walks into it. He's going for a sippy cup, even better, even better. But we can still heal him up, no problem. Middle lane getting pushed in like crazy. We see the mouth I yell, don't be afraid, Butcher. Make it happen, make it happen. Here, I'm gonna initiate for him. Good Unstoppable is going to not get Mouthiel caught inside of... Oh, come on. Keep hitting me. There it is. There it is. We got it. We got it. We got it. On Tracer, she's taken down. We need to hit stuff to heal up our Maev. She's going in, though. I can't save that, Maev. I can't fucking save that. The Butcher, with the late charge, is going to commit now. And we are still moving in here. I need to back up. We're in tower range. Let's put a green man down. Let's heal up our team with that. Stay in the green man. Stay in. You don't have to leave. Just stay in the green man. All right. Beautiful. And we reeled that situation back in. No problem. In 10 seconds, we're going to be able to turn in again. Let's ping that for the team. Make sure they know it is coming up. The enemy team Samuro, that's the real one. But he swaps out at the last second. The real one now located back here. Is he going to double? Is he going to double juke? He could go over the wall. No. <laughs> no. Someone asked me on stream the other day, is there a character that I really miss that was reworked? And my answer was Tassadar. But having months to think about it more, I think the old Samuro was one of my favorite play styles in the entire game. Being able to just get away with everything, push lanes, PVE, and team fight all at the same time with proper minion management was so fucking fun. Uh, I'm in on this pretty hard. Looks like Maev's going in as well. We take down the enemy team's mouth yell. No problem. Kel'Thuzad did have a good skill shot there, but didn't fully commit to it. Butcher charging in on the enemy team's white main and silencing her as well as we continue to just expel healing around us non-stop. That was the Abathur clone of the Butcher as we go take down this building with no issues whatsoever. Top lane is going to have a spider reinforcing this push really soon, but I actually think I should have stayed with the team. I think this was my bad. If, if anything happens, I'm going to take responsibility. Uh, the enemy team's Kel'Thuzad is looking pretty low, and we're just going to walk in and solve that problem. Divine Palm! We're alive! Can they say the same? Well, some of them definitely cannot. Kel'Thuzad taken down, as well as Tracer there, as we continue to just heal everything around us nonstop. I picked a talent I didn't even know Charism had until I uh, picked him up again two games ago. This Fist of Legend allows him to gain the benefit of his other level one talents as well. So every third attack, we're also healing for a little bit. Every third attack, we're also dealing a, a little bit of extra bonus damage. It's actually really, really cool. 
Uh, I'm staying on the building because that's what everyone should be doing. And more importantly, it's giving me a lot of cooldown reduction as well. We are going to have to get a little creative with our movement here, waiting for Divine Palm to become available again. But it turns out we didn't even need to do that. We pumped out 66,000 healing to our allies in this game. 26,000 hero damage is more than our Butcher. <laughs> and did a decent amount of siege for a healer as well. Bro, I love this build. It's one of my favorite builds in the whole game. Speaking of the build, we went for Insights at level 1, Spirit Ally at level 4, Blazing Fist at 7, Divine Palm, Spell Shield, Echo of Heaven, and Fists of Legend. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Certainly hope that you enjoyed it. We will be back soon with a look at Leoric. Take care. See you guys again soon.